bring things down. No, wait. That's what I Anson Seal is not going to bring things down. Artist based here in San Antonio. Time-based works of photographic art have been exhibited in museums and galleries internationally. They've been collected by corporate, institutional, and private collectors. And he also works with a special digital panoramic camera of his own invention. His camera has the ability to capture a vertical slice of the scene over and over in rapid succession and effect it swaps the horizontal dimension of the photo for the dimension of time and instead of mirroring the world as we know it, it records kind of a hidden reality. It's kind of like a microscope or a telescope, but it expands our ability to perceive more, more about what <laughs> San Antonio to produce some artworks for the renovation. The original tile mural over the entrance here is called Confluence of Civilizations by Mexican artist Juan O'Gorman. I wanted to extend his metaphor of confluence to the actual waterways that make up our area. So I traveled to the four confluences in Bear County to witness what there was there and create my own artwork to be called Confluence Flowing Together. You can see here the Medina River is the main watershed in our area. It's not easy to find these confluences from the ground, as uh, most of them are on private land. The one I did manage to locate on foot cost me a massive case of poison ivy, <laughs> for which I'll spare you the visual. <laughs> Believe me, the best way to get to know these uh, confluences is by kayak. So I enlisted the help of my friend Brian Anderson to guide us to our four destinations. This turned out to be several great adventures, including encounters with snakes, wild hogs, and many, many fallen trees that we had to carry the boats around. There was also incredible natural beauty, soaring cliffs, rock formations, birds, all this within Luke 1604. Once we found the particular confluence we were looking for that day, we'd pull the boats up onto the bank, go for a swim, and then I'd unpack my gear and start shooting. <coughs> I did ruin a camera on the trip in one of my many uh, capsizing events, uh, but that was just a good excuse to go buy a new one. I've made many panoramic cameras over the years. The one used for this trip is the one in the middle here. It's called a slit scan camera because it focuses light onto a single pixel row or a slit behind the lens. The surprising result is that it can exchange the horizontal dimension for the dimension of time. I can show you how slit scan cameras work with the help of my cat here. <laughs> Objects that do not move are blurred, and objects that do move are rendered clearly. You might be tempted to say that the resulting image is distorted, but I would argue that uh, it's actually an accurate, although different, way of recording the same reality. In photographing water this way, the results show a fascinating blend of reflection and transmission of light energy. The photograph can be physically as long as the amount of time that I leave the shutter open. This one was shown at Luminari a couple of years ago, and it's 100 feet long. A closer inspection of the water image shows not only the waves and reflections of the sky, but also objects floating in the water. The rainbow streaks at the bottom here were actually leaves moving very slowly. So with this kind of photography, the point is not so much the faithful reproduction of the natural world, but to take a look at reality in a different way, just like a telescope or microscope extends our human vision. 
So my goal for the theater lobby was to create something more than just flat photos, and I came up with the technique of extending the slit scan image into the third dimension. First, the image is separated into its four component colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, just like for four color printing. Each color separation is run through some special software that creates a stippling effect. So instead of using a grid like in normal printing, each dot finds its own sort of first personal space and size in relation to all the other dots. This algorithm creates a much more organic pattern than the standard grid and standard printing. Next, each color separation is printed onto a piece of a quarter inch acrylic with a giant flatbed printer. The printer uses UV light to cure and dry the ink. There are two layers of each color, cyan, magenta, yellow, and one of black, so there are seven color layers altogether. These panels are then carefully stacked together in register with a layer of sheet glue between each color. The whole stack is then bagged and put in the giant pressure cooker you can see in the background there called an autoclave. It's squeezed at 100 pounds per square inch and heated for eight hours. When the pieces emerge from the autoclave, the plexiglass is all bonded together into one perfectly clear slab weighing 435 pounds. The color layers interact with one another to form the complete image, but the dots are separated in space throughout the plexiglass. Here you can see Alex polishing the edge. Installation of the artwork in the theater lobby was tricky because of the weight and the fact that uh, we had to install near the end of the renovation where lots of delicate finishes, new carpet, and glass were all exposed. Some pieces had to be hoisted up over this glass railing to be installed on the balcony level in the theater. The installation company even created some special machinery to carefully lift and place the finished pieces into their wall niches. LED panels uh, illuminate the pieces from behind. These pieces were meant to be seen from many angles and by people moving past them on their way to the theater. So here's one of the, um, just a little bit out of order, but what you've seen so far is only half the project. Inside the theater, there are 54 panels that rise 65 feet from the floor and show a continuous confluence scene over both walls of the house. These LED panels are suspended from the ceiling to help create a lighter atmosphere. So here's one of the four permanent pieces in the lobby of the Lila Cockrell Theater. I got some great help from Marmon Mock, the architects on the project, and also from uh, Public Art San Antonio and many interns who worked for Peanuts. In early Texas history, the water around us cradled San Antonio, forming our own fertile crescent, if you will, of, of civilization. And we are here because the water is here. So my work for the Lila Cockrell Theater is all about the flow of water and the flow of time. The confluence of civilizations in this area, sometimes harmonious, sometimes violent, Always creative and often surprising, like building Japanese trucks on the site of the oldest ranch in Texas. Um, just as the numerous smaller waterways in and around San Antonio all converged to form one life-giving system, we as individuals work together throughout time to produce the continuous flow of history. Uh, 